hands. So now we're starting to catch those hands. So ace king offsuit, big slick here. Same bet size, you know. Same position, same bet size. It's difficult to read uh, if these guys are paying attention. Um, and you know, as it's flying from table to table, also we're not really without our stats keeping a real eye on this. But yeah, that's that's always a good thing. We got the backdoor flush draw and the nut. Uh, uh, back to a nut flush draw and top hair top kicker. So there's not a lot to protect against here. And I opt for a check raise, which I'm going to do from time to time as a bluff, as you guys have seen. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, you know, it's also check raise to protect against the hearts, right? We do have the one blocker, maybe a potential runner. But, yeah, that's all, all she wrote. You know, if another heart comes, we're, we're sweating bullets and check raise you know if you're check raising guys on the flop you got to be check raising also when you have it right that's the most important thing just make sure that you're, you're you're making certain moves when you both have it and don't have it that's the idea queen 10 suited is also a steel raise hand get one caller and here again I'm gonna go ahead and bet about, in this case I'm looking at his stack too, right? So about one-fourth of his stack, a little more, right? Which is just under pot size here. And if he does anything, then, then we're done with that hand, even with the queen. And that was the idea with that bet size. Alright, crazy eight. And we get a min raise here. And it's a mid stacker again that's increased his stack a bit. So yeah, again, about 50 big lines, a little less. And we just flat and bet in position versus a miss C bet on the king flop. And take it down. So here, guys, we got a walk with a king nine offsuit, and that's always nice. Uh, looking for the ten, <laughs> rainbow board. So any ten's good, and a king may be good. Who knows in the limp pot here? Uh, he limps. Or he basically min bets here, and now I'm gonna check raise this as a pure bluff. Ah, not a pure bluff. We do have this semi semi bluff option here if the ten does happen to fall. Queen did not. So if I check this and he doesn't bet it, I'll be surprised. He does not maybe sucking us in here but I'm gonna bet that out on the river anyways and take it down with absolute nonsense <laughs> so that's yeah again plan plan not what your hand is but what your hand looks like and of course as always you know, that's much easier when you have stats on your players you know how much they're folding on respective streets <laughs> but here we're playing blind you know kinda intuitively and the six max environment and yeah I think the ranges that I gave you guys here at the beginning of this theoretical video are definitely useful in that regard. And again, adjust them as you will, and just see you know see the level that you're playing, uh, how tight it is. And and another thing is, guys, on the weekend, you're gonna see players that are just you know the the tourists coming through. Um, they're gonna be much wilder, much, they're calling you down much much lighter with any pair kind of nonsense. And yeah, I mean the weekend play is by and large in any pretty much any online card room much more lucrative in general not always but in general right the um, guys playing during the week right a lot of them are semi-professionals or professionals or um, have at least a lot of experience <laughs> and yeah again it's gonna be a different game during the week and on the weekend just uh, definitely keep that in mind as well that's how it is here I'm gonna squeeze one time three bet squeeze from the button so I've got position and I'm squeezing this player who's already doubled and this guy who may be calling lighter. So the idea with the squeeze, and I'm squeezing kind of light here with my pair of fours. And get flatted after he was really considering it. So he could be whipped real easily here with over, over cards. And I'm gonna see bet again, about 80, 90% of all squeeze pots where I'm a squeezer. And especially in position after a check on a low board. 
and we take it down and contest it with our force. That's the idea of the squeeze in position, guys. Very, very powerful. You can do that with a very wide range of hands, right? Depending on yeah, how how loose the open razor is and how loose the cold collar is. So AJ suited in the small. And we get a raise here, steel raise, and again we make a re-steal three bet. And we pick up the overcard flop yet again. And with our resteal, we definitely see about this, this board here. He could have missed that uh, just as easily as we have. We can double barrel here again because nothing's changed, right? So that's the idea. I want to give him the idea that I've got an over pair, and he lets it go. And again, that's not always going to work out, guys, especially at the low stakes, these guys. Uh, you would be amazed at, amazed, absolutely amazed at what they'll call with. And so, yeah, you got to be a little bit careful with your, your continued aggression uh, over multiple streets. But, you know, if you, if you make a, a flop C bet on a relatively low board, then, you know, lower card hits, you got you got to make a, I mean, nine times in ten, maybe eight times, seven times in ten, you got to go ahead and take another shot there on the turn for sure. Alrighty, and here with the 45, I would have flatted, over flatted, but I let that go. Alright, so here we're going to flat one on the button with the uh, off-suited Broadway versus a middle position razor for hopefully a cheap flop. We do flop the king, and again, that's a really dangerous board, right? Um, you could be raising with fives and sevens, of course, better kings. Here, I'm just going to raise it directly, see where we stand in position, and take it down. Again, you know, flatting in position uh, with the speculative hand, or weaker hand, say. And, yeah, making a move post-flop in position. And that's, again, that's, that's kind of the determining factor in a lot of my speculative plays, uh, whether or not it's suited or not. Kind of giving myself away if I ever play you guys in the future. <laughs> but, yeah, it's all good. So we, we three bet here to steal the button, and we do. So we get last position with our raise, plus initiative, and flop nonsense. <laughs> he checks it. We represent the king. With our c-bet, and take it down and contest it with a complete whiff. It's the power of the c-bet in position. All right, 44. We're hoping to hit that set this time and get a little action. 40, and we're going to re-steal. Just over three times this time. Here, guys, we... Yeah, we over, over cold call that, and now I'm going to bet into it as a semi-bluff versus all these guys. Uh, because we do have the nut flush draw here, and we're looking at a couple of small stackies that could shove and get us in good if these guys decide to fold. The big stacks fold, right? And now I can shove all in here and think my ace is also good. So with all that dead money, I like that play. Um, we'll see if we can't catch that. Wow. Alright guys, uh, King Queen here. I'm going to flat this thing and then I'll buy the button just with the flat. And I do have position then post flop. See what flops. And here we pick up the open ended straight draw. And again, you want to play your open ended straight draws more often than not when it's a um, non suited board, basically rainbow boards are very good for that. They're also very good for semi bluff pushes versus small stacks. And yeah, the big stack guy can totally put a huge dent here, but that's that's huge fold equity. Uh, okay, so we do have 30 something plus percent on that. Nines and aces. No dice. Now, guys, we pick up Ace King here in the small. Um, it is raised from the cutoff. We make our standard re raise here as a re steal. get flatted and it's a monotone board with the ace top here top kicker I'm gonna check it and give him a chance to push he doesn't bite 
and I'll make it a little bit smaller bet because that didn't change much here. And now I can shove because his pot is his stack is half the size of the pot, and he lets it go. So we flatted one here with a 97 on the button. He checks to us, did make a C bet. We bet into it and take it down. Alright, so the ace nine suited. If these guys all use the entire time, we'll take forever to get around. <laughs> so he raises. And again, I don't want to go three betting UTG raisers necessarily, especially when they don't have much left. And you can almost fold that, given his stack size, but we're going to flat here, see what comes. We're going to play hit or miss poker if this guy just flats. Yeah, we missed, and we've got to believe anything. And this guy should actually shove, um, even with overcards. And he only checked, well, that leads me to believe he's also in overcards. I'm going to take a shot here, and it's going to be half this guy's pot size, right? Half, a little under pot size and half of his stack, say. And hope to take that down here. I contested after he checked behind, and that's yeah, kind of an intuitive play. But that's it, it smelled like weakness over cards, and the bet size was again right under pot size plus half this guy's remaining stack, and that was yeah, that was a play. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click the sit out. I'm also outside of the blinds, right? So I've caught a couple of hands for the hands that I paid for with my blinds. And again, you do not limp those big hands, right? You bet them just like you bet everything else and hope that you get play. <laughs> and no play today. And what I'd like to do now is, because there were probably a couple of hands that um, may have been a bit unclear as to, to why I made certain moves, I'd like to pull those up right now on the uh, Holder Manager Replayer, review those, and then, yeah, check out with with those with those hands in mind and then show you exactly what's going on also mathematically kind of behind the scenes so I'd like to end this video with a few of the most interesting hands concerning equity and lines that we played and yeah not all of them were one hands by any means but uh, a few of them actually looked maybe a little bit funky on the outside but were based on equity actually quite sound and that's yeah exactly what I want to show you guys. What I want to show you guys right now. So we've got the A7 suited here in the small under the gun min raise at uh, three uh, exited, and we get a flat, an over flat, and right here we're getting now 4.2 to one odds. So only a 19% chance of hitting a playable flop, and we overcall. Good, and then we get a final overcall behind us, and the flop comes. All right, we flop the nut flush draw, and it may well be the case that our ace is good versus five players that may or may not be the case because we've only got the seven kicker. But again, we've got the nut flush draw plus kind of a funky running running stray draw that could happen, um, and of course, yeah, the nut flush, and then potentially then the ace. So that's what we're looking at right here, and we half pot semi bluff it out. All right, we get one call by a short stacker, and the under the gun raiser then pops it for his entire remaining stack. Fold, fold, and it's our call. So this is the one that you guys saw in the video, and the one that I wanted to, yeah, of course, start this off with, and that's the fact that I'm getting right at three to one odds. So I only need about 25% equity to break even in the long run. Okay, so. Let's see exactly how this went down. I come over the top, right, to hopefully knock this guy out. And he actually calls, which in the end just adds to our total bottom line. King and then nine. Okay. Let's run it back with the known cards. So this guy opens with king, queen under the gun. Not a bad raise. Flat, flat. We flat. The 46 decides to over flat here. Uh, he is also getting crazy odds to do so. But, I mean, this is a short stack fish, right? This isn't a short stack pro. So he flats it, and here comes the flop. Yeah, we're 39% before the flop. Flop comes and we're 41, that's right. So essentially, our ace does play, as does actually in this case, every seven and every ace and every spade. So we've got, yeah, just a hell of a lot of equity going for us. And again, with our pre-flop, let's see here with our flop called, and ultimately we only needed 
25%, right? So in this three-way pot with all that dead money, needing only 25%, knowing you know what our draw probably looked like, uh, then we yeah we opted for the the push over the top to knock the other guy out. Uh, he ends up jumping in there and adding to what we should have taken down at 41% of the time, basically two times and two times and five. And so we get it in actually ahead of both of these guys. They only have 27 and 32% respectively. And the break-even point is exactly 33. So his push is actually really, really good here for the open-ended straight draw. And our call was also completely justified, um, contrary to what it might have looked like in the video when you were seeing it for the first time. So, yeah, we make that call with 41% equity. You know, only needed 25, given the pot odds. And then <laughs> there's a king. So he hits, and now all of a sudden we're behind. And the nine comes, actually making his... Uh, his straight but it didn't really matter because he had hit the king so yeah hard luck and in the long run you know when we get it all in on the flop yeah we're making the difference between this 25% and our actual equity right times the pot size so yeah like that I like that call I like that line um, again pre-flop we're just making the over call with pretty good odds and yeah flop what we're looking for basically the nut flush draw maybe the over card ace pull and yeah there you go basically a 12 outer flush draw and the top pair and again you guys see I mean 12 out draws yeah they've got their merit equity wise on the flop call it all in get it in really good so king queen here in the cutoff UTG razor we flat and we get another caller right here so he checks the Preflop aggressor makes his c-bet, and we have a 10-jack, queen-king, and open-ended straight draw on a rainbow board. So we've got eight clean outs, and the queen and the king may be good, right? If these guys are on under pairs, any any kind of um, yeah, jack a, jack knife, something like that. Um, yeah, so yeah, we have at least eight clean outs we would assume right and again the king or the queen may be good here so let's see what we got uh, also you know ace jack for example that would definitely be um, on somebody's list uh, of course the uh, jack queen jack king would nullify our over card draw but at least the open ended straight draw and these guys uh, this guy's you know mid stack player and this guy over here does have us a little bit scared but we don't want to be fooling around so yeah this is an aggressive move we shove <laughs> on the flop with the maximum equity with our draw here and we're actually thinking that this guy's gonna check out after his check and we wanna just yeah, actually take this down with a semi bluff push yeah, versus in our mind basically only one player and so he folds as we expected and this fellow then calls and we miss unfortunately and he shows down then I think yeah kings okay so how does it look pre-flop to, to river so pre-flop, yeah, kings are, of course, versus a complete domination here with a king-queen. At, yeah, right at 91% ahead. That's a very common case also with queens versus queen-jack, for example, same principle. Uh, if we did have the ace-king, though, we would be at 30% plus minus. He bets it out, we flat, and here, all of a sudden, you know, we get we get up to 32% for our open and a straight draw. In this case, the king and the queen do not play, of course. <laughs> And yeah, if he's again on ace jack, um, yeah, any kind of weaker jack here, um, yeah, we're looking really, really good. So yeah, again with this shove, yeah, I like it. You know, we basically here's our here's our flat call for thirty one percent. We could just call that flat and then wait for wait for the next card, right? That's yeah, that's possible. Um, yeah, and then I guess check out when he shoves, or we can go ahead and make the aggressive move right now. And that's what we opt for in this case, thinking that we actually have fold equity. He's making a C-bet maybe with overs that he could let go. And yeah, we shove that all in with 32% equity to the river, knowing his holding, right? And against his entire range, I think I'll pull that up in Poker Stove just to kind of bring this point home. Exactly, yeah, 68% to 30, 32 more or less. So you can see that that definitely corresponds here. Hold the manager replay and Poker Stove. Good, but this guy, you know, we don't know that he's on kings, you know. And on this board, this 10-2 yeah, jack rainbow, he did open under the gun, but what's the under the gun 
you know, open raise range. Um, some guys even this wide, you know. And yeah, then you see bets, you know, see bets a lot. Let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, and you know, we even with our open and straight draw, we've got 45% against his entire range. And he's going to be folding a lot of that, right? Versus uh, basically a raise versus a C bet on the flop. So with fold equity plus an estimated 45% equity in general against his entire range, if we tighten that up, um, let's say he's not raising any pair, but something like this. Yeah, kind of tighten him up like this and give him a 12% range for under the gun. Then even then, you know, we're at 40% plus fold equity. And yeah, it's, it's a bit of a variance play, but it's something that you can definitely do. And I think you can also do it, um, yeah, profitably in the long run. All right, and last two hands and we'll call this a wrap. We've got 98 suited on the button. Min raised here in the hijack. We flat with position and a decent speculation or speculative hand. Good. We flop again, actually the example hand that I had shown you guys in the earlier portion of this video, uh, the theor uh, theoretical portion where we have in our mind probably all nine outs for the hard draw, for the flush draw, and we've got all four for the seven for the inside straight draw. And in that case, of course, we've got our 12 outer again, and this guy is on a relatively small stack and he then just shoves given the pot size and that's a good idea. So we then flat and the question is was that right or wrong? <laughs> so what are our odds here? We're getting basically 1.34 to 1. All right, so we're calling essentially 3 on yeah, 435 pot. And yeah, we need 43% equity to break even in the long run. All right, we flat that. Five comes and then the queen. And yeah, we're not sure about how this is going to go here given the two paired board. We do end up taking it down uh, with our flush versus his, yeah, at this point, um, queen's up, ace kicker hand. And let's look at this here, knowing their whole cards. All right. It is raised up. We flat. There comes a flop, and look at this, guys. We both missed, right? We both missed his flop. So essentially, you know, he's on he's on over cards, so that's about 24% to the river, um, given his draw. But yeah, there's some other stuff going on here. Um, most importantly, of course, that he is theoretically ahead of us right now. And that means if we don't hit any of our outs coming into the turn, this is gonna change dramatically because we both missed, right? But in this case, ironically enough, also the eight and the nine outs are good for us. That's why we're at 62% equity. So we're looking at a nine outer for the flush, right? All four sevens, uh, minus the seven of hearts. So that's gonna put us up to 12, as we had, plus three, plus three, right? Um, for 18 outs, it looks like in this case. And an 18 outer with 18 clean outs is exactly in around 62% to the river. Yeah, you guys are gonna see how this how this works out here equity wise. We have eighteen outs. Eighteen outs on that flop. Pretty crazy. And so he pushes. However, yeah, we didn't count our eight and nine outs, of course, not knowing his holding, but here we can. And yeah, we put ourselves actually on the twelve outer. And I think I also mentioned that in the video. And the turn comes and look at that. Drops a full twenty one percent in equity when we miss that when we miss that one of our eighteen outs here on the turn. However, We've still got the 18 outs and we got 41% coming into the river. And there's one of them. So we take down that small pot. But it's a really interesting hand, I think, for a lot of guys out there, um, not knowing the strength of these of these draws and, and places you can make based on that. So last hand, guys. We've got the old Jack Queen of Hearts and just flat in a blind battle. So we've got position on all post flop streets. Got a decent speculative hand, again, suited suited Broadway. And we opt, instead of just three betting this directly, we opt for the flat versus this mid stacker. All right, we flop overs, and he makes a standard half pot C bet, and we make a typical float move. This is our float line. 
So we just flat his c-bet on the flop. He then makes a bet, right? So if he checks, we bet it. And if he bets, we push it. And that's a very typical imposition float line. Uh, you can you can also play exactly the same way with nonsense, you know, with any two, ace, king, stuff like that. Uh, under pairs, over pairs, a lot of stuff. You, you'll be able to get away with this, especially versus big sack players quite a bit. Um, but in this case, yeah, we hit our queen and decide to go ahead and yeah continue this this float move here when he bets we just raise it all in he does call it and we get to the showdown he shows us the seven jack o clubs <laughs> so this is not a mid stack professional it's a mid stack fish and let's look at this here again when we know everybody's cards so we've got um, a situation typical domination situation where you have the highest card of your opponent plus a better kicker pre-flop, and it's almost always a 70-30 split. In this case, it has to do with the suitedness and connectedness here. So, yeah, we're yeah about 72% equity here to the river. He raises we flat, and there's the flop, and then it drops even, even lower down to 18. And so, again, we make this flat call, and then when the queen comes, it stays similar because he picks up a flush draw to boot, and that's about it coming into the river right at 20% when he knows our cards. He bets, we push, get it in for 80% equity, and take down the little pot. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our second video in the Storm Poker Challenge for MyBet.com. As always, if you have any questions or comments concerning these videos, please feel free to contact us at any time. And one final time, I do apologize for uh, the parts of this video that may have been a bit dry, I think it was a necessary evil and definitely useful for a lot of novice and recreational players out there who are relatively new to the game and don't have this theoretical background. For those of you who are quite advanced and um, yeah, for whom this is all basically a recap or something that you already yeah, well knew, don't worry. Uh, the future videos are going to be all action. We're going to start up our third video here in the Riders of the Storm series with a two storm cash game table session. And yeah, we're going to call that getting into the lineup, kind of, yeah, getting used to getting used to the break, uh, running two, two cash game tables simultaneously. Then our fourth video in the series is going to be basically a combination of tournament and cash game play together so that you can optimize your, your win rates. Uh, optimize at least the total hands that you're playing, especially when you're clearing bonuses, um, when you're playing your tournaments and then running simultaneous cash games. That's going to be the case very often. You're just going to be hanging out and you can definitely maximize that time at the machine by playing especially Storm cash game tables since they are so fast as you guys just saw. And of course from then on out uh, we're going to be dropping in and just riding freely. Four Storm cash tables per video as a bare minimum, I promise. Uh, no theoretical intro and just going for it. So that's what's in store for you guys. Uh, again, I do hope you enjoy it. I hope you got a lot out of it. Also, if it were just a recap, I hope that it was useful. And I think definitely some of these spots, some of these theoretical example hands will be certainly, certainly educational even for quite advanced players um, concerning, yeah, the equities, uh, the equity matchups, the math behind it, and how strong your draws can be equity wise even when you completely quote unquote whiff the flop yeah those those 12 and 15 outers plus guys those are strong strong flops and you now know how to push them win lose or draw <laughs> so again this is dylan for mybet.com wishing you all the best and definitely best of luck at your next storm table